Hi guys, it's Kayla and welcome back to Tangled Up in Trouble Chapter 1. We are going to start and finish Cody's story this episode, so let's get started. I decide to let Cody take me to work. Cody's done absolutely nothing wrong. If anyone's to blame, it's the person who's harassing him. And yet, Cody's practically worried sick about me. If I let him accompany me, hopefully it will wipe away some of his guilty conscience. This reasoning helps me make my choice. So, how do you like riding on my motorcycle? It was a lot of fun! Thanks, Cody! I remove my helmet and hand it to Cody while banking him. Thanks to Kaleido's nice weather, the breeze feels good while riding. I'm glad to hear that. The faintly troubled look Cody is wearing turns into a smile. Hopefully giving me a ride was a good distraction for him. It's my fault you had such a horrible start to your day. Cody, it's not your fault. Stop apologizing. If you insist. He places his hand on top of my head. You're too kind, Kayla. He then smiles and pats my head several times. Me? Hardly. If anyone's kind, it's you, even though you're the one suffering most from this harassment. Maybe. Still, I'm the source of it all. Please stop beating yourself up out of concern for me. A wistful grin rises on his lips. Thanks, and Kayla? Cody pauses for a moment. No, never mind. Maybe later. He then shrugs and his tone abruptly changes. So what time do you get off work? I'll come get you. Huh? He's really gonna take me home too? Hmm, let's say, isn't it dangerous? But isn't it dangerous for you to be out alone? No one will be worried too. That's right, it's not safe. I can't let him talk me into it. Uh, don't drag Nolan's name into this. I'd love to come pick you up. It's no trouble, right? Well, now what do I tell him? He's really concerned about me, isn't he? My determination immediately begins to waver under his steady gaze. No, it's not any trouble, but... It's not? Great. Then I'll expect to find you here waiting when I show up. Thankfully, nothing happened on the trip here, but I can't stop worrying about that possibility. I'm grateful for his concern. You're sure you don't mind? My image of Cody has changed a little since my experience attending the party following his movie premiere. I'm now keenly aware of the huge expectations people have for his acting career. Because of that, I feel bad that he's using his valuable time driving me around. I really appreciate his willingness to spend his free time seeing me back and forth to my job, but he really should be relaxing when he's not working. I begin to wonder what he thinks of my silence when suddenly he reaches out and takes a hold of my cheeks. Look at me, Kayla. Huh? Look at me and remember I'm your neighbor and I absolutely adore you and I'm worried about you. Not only does he speak gently, his voice has a vaguely familiar pleading quality to it. Oh, my heart suddenly leaps. What did I feel just now? He continues to pinch my cheeks while gazing affectionately into my eyes. I appreciate that you're worried about my work, but there's no need to be. I've got some time off before filming starts again. He continues his explanation in an effort to rid me of my hesitation. Even if that wasn't the case, you had quite a scare this morning. You shouldn't be worrying about me, you understand? Please, Kayla, let me act as your knight in shining armor. His playful smile momentarily distracts me. I doubt any girl could refuse this much warmth and kindness. Beyond his charm, I feel a deep sense of something close to nostalgia spreading out from my heart. What could this feeling be? I imagine there's a lot of girls in this country who would want you as their knight in shining armor. Is it really appropriate that I get you to myself? Yes, I want you to. He quietly continues pushing his point. I promise I'll be here, so be a good girl and wait for me then. I will. Thanks, Cody. When he sees me softly nod, he lets out a sigh of relief. Cody offered to be my knight in shining armor and pick me up from work, all because of that package this morning, and yet, regardless of the reason, his offer fills me with excitement. He's in real trouble. It's inappropriate for me to be happy about this, isn't it? I'm observing the Kaleida leopards, and yet Cody's face continues to remain into my thoughts. I can still faintly make out the touch of his fingers pinching my cheeks. Michelle, what time is it? My colleague's voice abruptly saps me back to reality. I turn around to find Timo staring at me. His normally indifferent demeanor seems almost frosty. Not only is your head in the clouds, but you're grinning from ear to ear. Sorry, there's no excuse for letting my mind wander during work. I have to stop daydreaming and concentrate. Forgive me, I won't let it happen again. I apologize again and Timo nods. Following that, I focus my attention on the research that I love so much. Lunchtime comes around and I finally take a break. All the stress from trying to keep my thoughts clear has left me unusually exhausted. If this continues, I'm going to be in trouble. I let out a small sigh. I just can't seem to contain my excitement at getting to spend more time with Cody. At the same time, I know I should. After all, he's currently wrapped up in some very real trouble. Suddenly, a question pops into my mind. Come to think of it, why is Cody being targeted in the first place? It seems to me everyone who knows Cody loves him. After all, he's honest and friendly and generally a great guy. Why would someone feel the need to harass him like this? I sit at the desk with my chin in my hands, contemplating the matter. What's up, Michelle? Oh, hi, Timo. Sorry, I was just thinking to myself. 
No need to be sorry. It's your lunch break. Thanks. As I nod back, I had the sudden idea to ask my impartial cohort for his ideas. Say, Timo, imagine you know a fantastic young man who's exceptionally honest and serious about his job. He's the kind of person no one could hold a grudge against. Can you think of a reason someone might want to harass him? Mm, maybe a jealousy. Timo lightly frowns. A grudge doesn't necessarily require a reason. His indifferent response starts to weigh on my mind. Humans are quite capable of one-sided feelings of jealousy or envy towards another. If these are strong enough, they can turn into a grudge. That grudge can take hold regardless of their relationship to the target. Jealousy or envy, huh? Hmm. I find myself repeating part of Timo's explanation. As a young actor, Cody's career is about to take off. His leading role in the film is causing a stir even before its release, but he worked hard to get to this point. I can't believe he would do anything to anger anyone. Perhaps what Timo said is right. However, if it's true and he's being harassed for no reason, that would be horrible. Timo quietly slips away and I spend the rest of my lunch break thinking about Cody. I wonder if Cody's already waiting. I check my watch as I make my way out of the institute after work. In order to give myself a bit of a margin, I've told him a time slightly later than normal. It's quite possible he hasn't arrived yet, but I much prefer this to having him wait for me. I'm all prepared to wait in front of the building for his arrival. However, when I look up again, the most improbable sight leaves me stunned. A huge crowd of girls is gathered outside the entrance. Huh? What in the world's going on? I work at an animal research facility. It's possibly the last place a group of young girls would want to converge on. As I stand there, staring in surprise, one of the girls calls out to me. Excuse me, do you work here? We heard a rumor Cody, Cody Gray the actor, rode up here earlier on his motorcycle with a girl. Is that true? We're hoping to meet him. Huh? I stare in bewilderment as the girls step towards me. My only assumption is someone was watching when Cody drove me to work this morning. But when? I struggle to think. Cody and I both had full face helmets on before we left Lilac Court so it seems unlikely that anyone we passed would recognize him. Besides, there's no way they could have known where we were headed. What in the world's going on? As surprised as I am already, my heart suddenly skips a beat. One of the girls pressing closer is angrily glaring at me. Wait a second, aren't you the woman on TV? TV? In my confusion, I blankly repeat the words. You were on the news with Cody, weren't you? The girl's remark, not to mention her sharp gaze, startles me. She's assuming I'm close to Cody and she doesn't appear very happy about that. Kayla? Checkpoint! Let's go. I suddenly hear my coworker Timo call to me. I turn around to find him peeking out from behind the building entrance. Get back in here. You've got work left to finish. I do? Okay, I'm coming. A sense of relief washes over me when I realize I've got an excuse to leave. Pardon me. I mutter to no one in particular before following Timo back inside. That was close. Timo remarks quietly without turning around once we are safely back in the lab. Huh? You are about to become the target of someone's envy. Me? I stand there quietly dumbfounded. The face of the girl asking me about my appearance on TV comes to mind. I wonder if she's the one. I don't know anything about her. Never seen her before in my life. We're perfect strangers, and yet I can still remember the angry look that she gave me. Suddenly, I'm overcome with fear. I hug myself in an effort to stop myself from shaking. Cody. Cody's gentle smile pops into my thoughts. Unlike me, a great number of people recognize Cody by name and by appearance, which means the odds of even a single individual harboring animosity towards him are significantly higher. As wonderful and magnificent as it sounds, it's not necessarily easy being famous, is it? It can be quite scary, too. Who knows what difficulties Cody's had to put up with that I don't even know about. Thanks for calling me back inside, Timo. My savior still has his back to me. Wait here until it gets dark. Even if you head out the back exit right now, you're liable to get caught. Sure, I'll do just that. Again, I'm really grateful. Timo's level-headed thinking really saved my skin. Wait, what if Cody arrives at the facility with all those girls out there? Timo, I have to contact Cody. That would be good. Timo nods and I quickly pull out my phone. However, Cody doesn't answer. Growing more concerned, I send him a text. In it, I explain that a bunch of his fans are gathered in front of the building and it might not be safe for him to show up. Given the time, he's probably already on his way. Maybe I should try reaching Nolan or Joy. I desperately place a call to Lilac Court. Fortunately, Nolan picks up. What is it, Kayla? Nolan, I'm glad you answered. Is Cody there? He just left. I believe he was heading to pick you up. That's right. Fear races through me as I explain about the group of girls who are gathered at the entrance of the Institute. I see. Something definitely sounds suspicious about that. I'll check it out. Thank you, Nolan. Would you like me to come pick you up? I pause to consider his offer. Uh, we're gonna wait for Cody. Although I appreciate Nolan's considerate offer, I immediately turn him down. Thanks, Nolan. However, I'd hate for Cody to come for me only to find me gone already. I'll wait for him to get here. Are you sure you'll be alright? The facility's monitored 24 hours a day. I'll be safe as long as I don't go outside. Okay, that's good. Be careful. I'm suspicious about that group of girls you described. There's a few things I need to check out. 
That sounds reassuring. Thank you, Nolan. I expressed my gratitude then in the call. After talking to Nolan, I checked my phone and there's no response from Cody. Where could he be? Is it possible those girls spotted him and they've got him surrounded? He might not be able to check his phone. It sounds like Nolan has a lead to investigate. Hopefully he'll find something and hopefully Cody stays safe until then. Consumed with worry, I wait for darkness to fall. The sun eventually sets, but there's still no reply from Cody. I sit in the lab, clutching my phone, waiting, repeating to myself that he'll be alright in an effort to alleviate my fear. I've lost track of time when I suddenly hear footsteps running toward me down the hallway. Kayla! I can only imagine how brightly my face lights up at the sound of that long-awaited voice. And sure enough, a moment later, the man it belongs to steps out of the darkness, safe and sound. Oh, thank goodness! And so chapter two begins. Cody! I call out excitedly. You're okay! I'm so glad! Sorry I couldn't contact you earlier. I'll bet you were worried. That's alright! Now that I know you're safe, I feel deeply relieved. Very well then. I'll go check on the leopards. It's good to see you found one another. Thank you, Timo. Sorry for all the trouble. Timo's already walking away as we try to express our appreciation. It's now just Cody and myself in the laboratory. I was beginning to fear whoever it is that's been harassing you might have stepped up to physical harm. I'm really sorry to have worried you, Kayla. But as you can see, not a scratch on me. I would have tried to contact you, but it wasn't safe at the time. Oh? And there's a group of girls out front looking for me. They'd spotted me. It could have caused a panic. Cody appears serious as he puts his hand on my shoulder and backs away to look at me. I couldn't pick you up and I couldn't even contact you. I felt so bad when I realized how scared you might be. I imagine he must have been scared as well. I'm alright, but it must have been just as scary for you, right? I'm just glad you're here. I look at Cody and try to sympathize with him. He has enough to worry about already without me. After all, Cody is the one who's being harassed. I should have gotten here faster. Don't say that. There was a surprisingly large group of girls out there all watching you. I was actually starting to think it might be safer if you didn't come at all. Really? Well, it couldn't have been easy for you sitting up here waiting. Thank you for your concern. Cody lets out a deep sigh. <sighs> I got a call from Nolan on my way here. He warned me that things could get bad if I showed up. He said he'd explain the rest once we met in person and insisted that I wait to contact you till afterwards. Why would he say that? This unexpected development leaves me puzzled. An ominous feeling comes over me, causing my heart to beat loudly. After what happened this evening, he's suspicious that Lilac Court may be bugged. <gasps> After all, we left this morning wearing full face helmets, and yet whoever it is knew who we were and where we were headed. Someone must have posted that gathered information online, and that's how these girls knew to gather here at the Institute. Are you kidding me? What a horrible thing to do! My voice rises in volume and begins to shake. Who could do such a thing, especially to an entertainer like Cody? Spreading his information online could do a lot of damage to his career. Kayla, I really feel bad you had to get tracked into all of this. Now, no one told me not to use my phone until we knew where the information was leaked from. That makes sense. The reason for Cody's lack of responses earlier goes far beyond what I feared. Nolan finally discovered there was a microphone hidden in the package that came this morning. Oh, so that's what happened. With a dress? Yes, and he asked for Mr. C's help to search the rest of Lilac Court just to make sure. So everything should be safe by the time we get home. I feel horrible causing all this trouble for everyone. Cody, try not to feel bad. The culprit's the one at fault here. I really appreciate you saying that. Thanks, Kayla. I offer Cody a chair as he lets out another deep sigh. The chair owner won't mind, except for the two of us. The lab's empty. It seems you made it here safely. Weren't the girls still gathered out front? Thankfully, Ryan gave me a lift in his car. I would have made it otherwise. I really owe him this time. Your brother came to the rescue, huh? That's wonderful. Once I managed to make it to the building, I tucked the guard into letting me into the back door. The car's still waiting outside, so we can use that to return home. Okay. It sounds like the girls are still out there, then. So it seems. Perhaps we should have waited a little longer. Do you have to work in the morning? Nope. I have tomorrow off. Then you won't mind returning home late. It will probably be easier to wait than trying to sneak past those girls. That sounds like a good idea to me. I smile. My fears have been all vanished and I'm actually feeling relaxed now. The business with the microphone still scares me, but things seem safe for the moment, which is truly a relief. And the best part of it all is finally having Cody at my side again. It's great to see you smiling. Cody lets out a sigh of relief, then slides his arm around my shoulders. When I first heard about the microphone, I was deathly afraid. All I could think about was the possibility that something might happen to you. My heart starts to beat loudly as I notice Cody's warmth. Like thickly accumulated snow, my pulse steadily climbs higher when I realize the depth of his concern. I've dreamt of this for a long time. Huh? I've always wanted to be the knight in shining armor. Cody suddenly appears to lose himself in thought. And yet, look at all the trouble I'm causing you. It's depressing. You wanted to be a knight. That must be a boy thing, huh? Yep. One lone princess's knight in shining armor. 
My heart suddenly leaps, surprised I look over at Cody. His serene expression reminds me of someone remembering something very special to them. My father shot a lot of films, all the while traveling around the world. He quietly explains, my brother and I visited a lot of countries with him. We used to excitedly wonder where we'd go next. I traveled a lot with my parents too. It was a great experience. Well, on one of his filming trips, I met a little girl. Cody's expression starts to turn incredibly sweet and kind as he begins describing the girl to me. Huh? I feel my chest grow tight with an inexplicable sharp pain deep within. He was there to film an animal documentary, but it took quite a while to get all the shots he wanted. During that time, the girl and I became really good friends. Of course, I realized I'd never see her again once the film was done. When the day came for us to leave, I couldn't stop crying. Filming ended and we had to part. As I said goodbye to her, I told her, I know we'll meet again someday. Cody turns to look at me and my heart begins to race under his gaze. I wanted so badly to stop her from crying, but I was just a child and couldn't even prevent my own tears. Then I decided the next time we meet, I would change that. I'd be her knight in shining armor. Cody had told me he wanted to be my knight and that he wanted to protect me. Did he say that because he had told that girl so many years ago? Is he continuing to honor a promise he made to himself that's buried deep in his heart? How should I react? I feel so confused. Why do I feel like I could burst into tears? I love her, even after all these years. Well, if this is anything like his main story, that little girl might be us. Cleared! For a moment, I think my heart will stop. Cody's in love with someone. This revelation completely unsettles me. The pain in my chest steadily grows until I feel my heart will burst. Kayla, what's wrong? He gently pulls me towards him. What's with that look on your face? I haven't stopped to consider my expression and I'm not about to ask. I lower my head and bite my lip. After hearing you describe that wonderful memory, I quietly whisper, I feel envious. I can imagine little Cody standing in front of that girl and confessing that he likes her. You do, huh? He gently caresses my hair. I wonder if he sympathizes with my feelings or if he's simply continuing to reflect on that little girl. Perhaps he's remembering her crying face at this very moment. Still, the touch of his fingertips soothes me and I quietly close my eyes. Suddenly, my imagination takes me back in time. I know it wasn't me, but Cody's warmth invites vaguely nostalgic fantasies of me as a little girl and his beautifully described memories. Isn't it strange for me to feel as if I've missed him all these years? Wow, look at the time. I'm really sorry about this, Kayla. Cody lets out a sigh after checking the time on the car's clock. Don't worry about it. Like I said, I have tomorrow off. I turn to look at Cody and smile. Eventually, the girls gathered in front of the Institute appear to give up. Although it took a while, Cody and I get to make our escape without incident. Thank goodness. I let out a sigh of relief. <sighs> Neither of us have said much following Cody's description of his memories back in the laboratory. Although we have continued to lean against one another, things have grown awkward after that. However, now that we're outside again, I feel like everything's returning to normal. Kayla, did you want to head straight home? Hmm? His question catches me off guard and I stop to think about it. Well, not heading straight home means we get to spend more time with Cody. So not necessarily. I'm in no real hurry to get home. I quietly consider his question a moment. After all, it is a lot of fun spending time with him. How can I think that? This isn't the time to be considering such things. I quickly chide myself. The suspicion that Cody may sense my less than altruistic thoughts leaves me feeling embarrassed. Would you be interested in going to the ocean? The ocean? Are you sure it's safe for you to be out walking? Don't worry, we'd be going to Mr. C's private beach. Mr. C has a private beach? I guess I shouldn't be surprised. Our landlord at Lilac Court doesn't do anything on a small scale, that's for sure. Cody laughs in amusement. He texted me a little bit ago and suggested we go. He thought we might want to have a change of pace after everything that's happened. That sounds great! I'll have to remember to thank him. Okay then, let's go for a drive and visit the ocean. Cody steps down on the accelerator. It's great to see you in a good mood again, Kayla. Oh? You didn't seem very happy there for a bit. I know it's my fault for getting you wrapped up in all of this. He's been worrying about me. I feel guilty and there's no good reason for me to let myself appear unhappy. It's inexcusable with everything that's going on. Cody feels he's responsible. I quickly shake my head. It's not what you think. I just had finished work when I stepped outside and ran into all those girls. Then when I finally met up with you, it was a huge relief. I'm sure at that point I let my exhaustion show a little bit. Okay. Cody smiles. Thanks, Kayla. You're too kind. I begin to wonder if he's seen through my excuse and is simply going along with it. Forgive me, Cody, but I can't tell you the truth. The knowledge that Cody's heart has been captured by another girl leaves me with a painful ache in my own. After passing through the gate that looks quite similar to Lilac Court, we arrive at Mr. Chrysler's private beach. Cody parks the car and we climb out. This feels nice. A pleasant breeze ruffles through my hair. 
The moon looks beautiful tonight. You can see it reflecting on the water. You're right, how pretty. The calm ocean surface acts like a mirror reflecting the night sky. I find this scene quite moving. I can't imagine anything more luxurious than standing here witnessing this beauty with Cody. Kayla, come join me. Cody motions for me to sit with him on the beach. He then removes his jacket and spreads it on the sand. There, now you won't get sand everywhere. Thanks, Cody, but what about your jacket? I could care less if it gets sand in it now. Come on. He motions for me to take a seat on top of his jacket. Although I appreciate his kindness, I feel bad for using it as a ground cover. When I hesitate, he takes hold of my hand and pulls. I told you, I want to be your knight in shining armor. Let me at least try a little. Thanks, Cody, but I think you're doing just a fine job already. I faintly laugh and sit down next to him. He wants to be a knight, huh? Suddenly, the memory of sitting back at the lab listening to him reminisce comes back to me. I envy that little girl living deep in his heart, and I imagine how happy I would be if he remembered me that way. Except I'm the one sitting next to him at this very moment. We must look like lovers, as we sit on the beach leaning against one another while staring at the ocean. But we're not. I'm not the one that Cody loves. I start to lower my head as I sit, quietly hugging my knees. Kayla? Cody's voice has dropped an octave when he suddenly says my name. He gently puts his arm around my shoulders. Huh? I know how much he loves to hug people. However, today, something feels different. Suddenly, I see Cody's eyes gleaming before me, and the reflections from them are steadily growing closer. <gasps> He's no longer just holding me, but pressing me firmly against him. The next thing I know, he has both arms tightly around me. Aww. You don't know how long I've wanted to do this with you. Co- Everyone at Lilac Court adores you, and I imagine that they would all love to be with you. And all the while, as I watched you, I knew I wanted to lock you in my embrace and have you for myself. Cody, I realize I'm staring at the moon over Cody's shoulders. I can't believe this is happening. I'm too startled to react. Even as Cody leans me over on the beach and I watch his figure descend upon me. Let me kiss you. That handsome face hovers just inches from mine and I can feel him exhale against my lips. He gazes at me with a yearning look in his eyes. Those eyes seem to draw me into them, heart and soul. A smile rises on my lips as they start to long for his touch. No, I turn my head away, hoping to break the temptation. What about that girl from his memories? They may have been children, but that makes no difference. Cody himself told me he still loves her. Mm. Rather than continuing his attempt to kiss me, Cody quietly begins caressing my hair. I'm so moved by his gentle touch that I find myself staring up at him again. Why does this simple caress make me feel like the most precious thing in the world? Painful discord rises in my heart. Why couldn't I be that girl in his memories? Kayla, what do you think of me? Cody asks softly with an earnest look in his eyes. His expression makes it easy to forget the little girl's memories living inside him. What do I think of you? The simplest thought of you causes my heart to ache. Please, tell me. I think you're a horrible person for asking me that. I slowly whisper back, because I love you. <gasps> We're going that far already? Even though you're in love with someone else? But you won't let me kiss you. Perhaps it's Cody the actor I love, as a fan. To be honest, I'm not really sure I understand what it means to love someone. What I do understand is that my heart aches every time I think about the girl in Cody's memories, that I feel bliss every time he touches me, and that I long for the sensation of his lips. I see. As he continues staring at me, he seems to grow solemn. Well, I just wondered maybe if I might hold a special place in your heart. He abruptly abandons his thought. Ah, uh, sorry, never mind. Huh? What was he about to say? Cody begins to sit up and the feeling of loneliness comes over me at the loss of his warmth. He stands and holds out his hand to help me up. Once I'm on my feet, I'm hesitant to relinquish his grasp. I got sand all over you. He mutters and helps me brush it from my hair and clothing. Afterwards, he gazes at me a moment then hugs me. This time, all I sense is his usual friendly innocence. He tried to approach me and I turned him away. Still, neither of us feel any bitterness towards the other. Now he appears as if nothing happened and is attempting to put things back to the way they were. This is the explanation I attach to his embrace. Say, Kayla, do you have any free time tomorrow? He asks in an abruptly cheerful tone. His nonchalance manages to dispel any remaining unease left between us. Tomorrow? Why do you ask? Well, I'm scheduled to be on set filming tomorrow. Would you be interested in coming to watch? In response to his unexpected offer, I... Checkpoint... Cleared. Okay, and here we are, guys. We're at the happy ending. Let's finish it out. Oh, this is gorgeous. At Cody's invitation, I used my day off from work to come watch him on the film set. Wow, look at all the fans gathered here. Everywhere I look, I see the film set surrounded by girls. They're all watching Cody with unconcealed excitement. He sure is well admired. And the admiration from the girls will surely play a big part in his furthering his career as an actor. I find myself a spot among the staff seating where the girls can't see me. The enthusiasm with which Cody immerses himself in his role is absolutely captivating. I really do love him, don't I? 
I whisper quietly in my heart as the realization hits me. This feeling of love comes bubbling up like a spring from deep within me and soon fills my whole body. Nothing else can explain how lonely I am right now to be apart from him. It goes beyond the captivation of watching him brilliantly perform for his admiring fans. This loneliness has to be love. Even if he had kissed me last night, I doubt he would have been upset. I won't go so far as to say I wanted him to steal a kiss, but then again, Cody wouldn't do something like that. I lightly touch my lips while remembering my refusal. They still yearn for Cody's touch. Why did he have to tell me about all those memories of that little girl he loves? I quietly start to sigh. Hey, have you seen a strange man walking past? Quick, get the bodyguards. Suddenly there's a commotion on the set. What's going on? My pulse begins to race. Don't tell me it's... The first thing that comes to my mind is the trouble Cody's been experiencing these last few days. Found you. Just then, I hear a strange man's voice behind me. <gasps> Before I can turn around, he roughly grabs my arm and I let out a scream. Come with me. I have no clue who he is. All I know is that he's carrying a knife. Help! I consider trying to wrestle free, then realize he might cut me with it. The thought causes me to freeze up. Kayla! Cody calls out to me. I'm startled by how close he sounds considering he was in front of the camera only moments ago. Cody! His name barely gets past my lips before I'm wrapped in a warm embrace. Cody pries me away from the stranger and holds me away from him. I'm the one you're after, right? Leave her alone! I can't think of an easier way to get to you than to hurt your woman. The man who looks to be about Cody's age glares at Cody with a hatred in his eyes. I'll show you what it's like to lose everything, then to finish it off. I'll take away those good looks of yours. Why is it you seem to get everything and yet I get left with nothing? You're going to be the one to pay for that. You don't know what you're talking about. The depth of the man's anger has me shaking in fear, and yet I feel compelled to speak up. He must be the person who's been harassing Cody all this time. Jealousy and envy? I recall what Timo had told me the other night. I can't let him get away with this. I try to step forward, but Cody holds me back. He looks too dangerous. I continue confronting the man while Cody holds me firmly in his embrace. Cody has worked hard to get where he is. He's never done anything wrong. Rather than sabotage other people's success, he has continued to struggle when things weren't going well. What's that supposed to? The man's anger suddenly shifts focus from Cody to myself. Kayla, you're only upsetting him. Just then, the bodyguards arrive and pounce on the man. I spot Nolan standing behind them. Talk about reckless, Kayla. I almost couldn't bear to watch. Nolan lets out a sigh. Nolan, what took you so long? My performance was subpar. I apologize for subjecting Kayla to any possible harm. The police should have issued the arrest warrant by now, but it looks like I may have saved them the trouble. You saved them the trouble? Don't even joke about that. You saw the danger that Kayla was just in. All right, all right, I hear you. And I do realize that Kayla's your little princess. Nolan disgustedly shrugs. I'm his little princess. Where does no one come up with these ideas? That was scary. Anyhow, I'll take care of this man. Thanks, that'd be great. Thank you, Nolan. So he is the one? That's right. He's the culprit behind all this harassment. Don't worry. After what he tried to do to you, I'll make sure he regrets the day he was born. Nolan's definitely the last person you want to have upset with you. Nolan, you shouldn't talk like that in front of her. I suppose you're right. Nolan's lips curl into a smile. Well, I've got work to do. Nolan glances over at the bodyguards and signals them into action. The man who has broken down into tears is quickly restrained after which Nolan leads the group away. Cody takes one hand from around me and uses it to cover my eyes. I realize he doesn't want me further subjected to the man's reviling existence. Since I began my career, he's not the first person I've met with such ideas. You have to remain positive at all times, or a single moment of weakness will take you to your feet from under you. Thankfully, your presence gives me strength to stay positive. If I had my way, pretty girls like you and the other fans that look up to me would never have to witness that dark aspect of this work. Cody whispered in a pained voice, Cody, I'm so sorry that you got dragged into this. I feel his arm give me a tight squeeze. Following that, Cody begins to address his fans. Everyone, it was kind of you to come watch us on the set, and I'm very sorry you had to witness such a horrible scene. We'll restart filming in a few minutes, at which time I'll show you my best acting performance yet to try and make up for it. Cody's heartfelt and considerate apology elicits excited screams from his gathered fans. Something else stands out to me, though. Mixed in among their screams are suspicions about my presence. Cody removes his hands from my eyes, and I'm abruptly greeted with their stares. They're all filled with envy. A moment later, Cody appears to notice, too, and quietly releases me from his embrace. Race. He wouldn't want to cause any misunderstandings. Just as I start to miss his warmth, I receive a surprise. Cody wraps both arms around me again. One more thing. There's someone I would like to introduce to you all. This woman here is my girlfriend. <gasps> ah, so cute. 
stunned, I look up at him. Does he realize what will happen if he says that? It's no surprise to me when screams start to rise from the crowd. After all, these girls are all in love with the famous actor, Cody Gray. Cody returns their stares with absolute sincerity. Let me be honest, my career as an actor has had its ups and downs. One wrong step and I could have ended up enraged with jealousy, just like that man you saw a moment ago. However, this woman has given me the courage to walk the straight and narrow. Cody turns and smiles to me with unbelievable kindness. I love you, and I've wanted to be your knight for a very long time now. Cody! I manage to say his name, but then nothing more comes out. Cody stares at me a moment, then turns his attention back to the gathered fans. I always try to be the gentleman that I believe you, my fans, wish to see, and I try to be the best possible actor. I want to be a man worthy of your admiration, and she helps me accomplish that. Just like a moment ago, she stood up to that man. The silence of the anxiously listening crowd of girls is once again broken by their excited screams. Only this time, there's no jealousy or envy, only the sounds of their blessings. They recognize that the two of us are in love, and they're happy for us. What should I do? I quietly sigh as I stare out at the beauty of Lilac Court's courtyard. Cody has passionately confessed to me while I was visiting the set where he's filming. On top of that, he introduced me as his girlfriend to all of his watching fans. And now, the following day, I find myself unable to watch entertainment news. He called me his girlfriend without even asking me. How could he do that? I lower my gaze and anxiously bite my lip. Of course, I would be lying if I said his confession had not moved me. However, Cody told me he still loves another girl. That makes it difficult for me to accept his confession for what it is. Here you are, Kayla. Why don't you come watch TV with me? Joy, don't start teasing me. I'm avoiding TV for the time being. Everyone's excited about you and Cody being together. They're calling you Kaleido's first couple. Cody's the one who announced it. Come on, Kayla. You like Cody, don't you? But he's still got feelings for another girl that he met a long time ago. He even told me so. He told me he wants to be my knight in shining armor, but I believe those words are really meant for her. What? There must be some kind of mistake. Aha, uh -huh. I thought something didn't seem right. Joy's surprise is abruptly interrupted by Cody. His appearance startles me. Where did he come from? Cody, how long have you been standing there? Just long enough. I can see he's pouting. Why? I begin to realize he's upset with me. It looks like you don't remember any of it, do you? Yes, I knew it. We're the girl. Huh? Remember? Remember what? My confession to you. You mean yesterday? Not yesterday. He replies while pressing closer. Joy fails to suppress a laugh as she watches us. All right, you two, I'll you deal with this. I can hear her snicker to herself while she walks away. Joy, wait a second. I quickly try to stop her from leaving. However, when I start to rise from my seat, Cody reaches out and wraps his arm tightly around me. Hey, you're not going anywhere. I've got something to say to you. Cody? Or rather, a request. A request? That unexpected remark causes me to turn and stare at him. Convinced I wouldn't try and flee, he finally releases his embrace. I adjust myself so that I'm facing him. I've wanted to be your knight in shining armor for the longest time now. Cody's no longer pouting and instead smiling bashfully. Please don't make me give up on my promise. Huh? I find myself holding my breath. He pulls out a photograph to show me. It's an adorable image of a little boy and girl kissing. Is this? My voice rises excitedly as I take hold of it. Captured in the photograph are young Cody and myself. Is this you and me? That's right, the little girl I met on my father's filming trips whom I couldn't forget. Cody gently places his hand over mine as I continue to hold the picture. My precious little princess. I stare at Cody speechless. The fervor in his gaze as he stares back threatens to consume me with its passion. Unbelievable, how could I have forgotten something like that? Cody's the first boy I ever kissed. Forgive me, Cody, I... I was actually jealous of myself. <laughs> that explains why being around him gave me those occasional unbearable feelings of nostalgia. Just as long as you remember now. I imagine you didn't have a photograph to remind you like I did. Of course, I still felt sad that you'd forgotten. He faintly laughs. So let me ask you again. Can I be your knight? He begins to lean toward me just like the little boy in the picture. Let me kiss you. His whisper reminds me of our night on the beach. I love you, Kayla. With no reason left to stop him, Cody and I gently kiss. It's a very innocent kiss with our lips lightly pressed together, just like in the picture. However, that innocence quickly begins to fade because we're adults now, and we're in love. Yay! I hope you guys enjoyed the happy ending, and this is the adorable picture of us recreating the kiss that we saw in the picture. And as a completion bonus for getting it finished by July 8th, I also unlocked the Tangled Up in Trouble after story. I'm going to record that later today and post it for Sunday, so I hope you guys are excited to read that. And in addition, I will also have Angel or Devil up for Sunday. So I hope you enjoy. Talk to you guys then. Bye.